You're listening to the Roofing Success Podcast, a show created to inspire roofing contractors to achieve optimal success in their roofing businesses. I'm the host, Jim Moline, the co-author of the book, Internet Marketing for Roofing Contractors, how to triple your sales and turn your roofing website into an online lead generation machine. I'm also the co-founder of Roofer Marketers, the digital marketing agency for the roofing industry. On each episode, I'll be sitting down with industry leaders to talk about their processes, the lessons they've learned, and how to find success in roofing. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Roofing Success Podcast. Really excited for today's guest, but first of all, if you're a longtime listener, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're really enjoying the content that we're putting out, make sure to give us a like, uh, drop a comment, you know, click subscribe, share this with, uh, with other roofing contractors that you know that might be interested and helping, uh, helping to find success in their business. So my guest today is a young, highly motivated entrepreneur with a finance and construction background. Marketing is his strong point, and, and he's led companies to very successful track records. His biggest asset, asset is his ability to, to be a leader and overcome obstacles. And this has allowed him to build successful teams that share the same passion to win as he does. And he believes that surrounding yourself with the right people is crucial when you're, when you're going for a championship. So we're going to talk a lot about that and, and, and get to know, you know some of the things that are working for him and, and some of the things that haven't. So today's guest is Jonathan Keating of Roof King. Welcome to the show, Jonathan. Hey, how are you doing, Jim? I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Great. So how about, uh, you know, for our listeners, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about your company? And, uh, and about yourself and how you got into, into roofing. Okay. Well, yeah, so I've been doing this right around 10 years. I started right when I was about 18, um, right when I was going to college. I've got a summer job, you know, selling roofs and just decided to stick with it. I did really well that summer and ended up going back to school and finding another company to work with, work for. And while I was in college, which, which I really, I guess, what kept me interested was I found a company that allowed me to work the entire time I was in school. So even when I was in school, I had a company vehicle and it was just, you know, go out when you want, sell roofs when you want, then they might, I might sometimes run their company leads. So, you know, by the time, from the time I was 18 to, you know, 21, 22, I got to make pretty good money compared to probably most kids because I had found this, you know, job that was um, very, you know, had very lucrative pay for definitely for somebody who, you know, is good at sales because we're selling, you know, a commodity and then going to school for finance and coming from an entrepreneur background with my family, my family's, you know, got some entrepreneurs in it. And, you know, I got one of those, you know, I got those parents that really, you know, push you. So I just decided, Hey, I've already got you know, four years experience now. I might as well just start my own business, you know, being 1099 allowed you to have your own LLC. So I had that set up and then, you know, you get to kind of see how that operates. So that's kind of what transitioned me to start my own business at 22. And then also, you know, by that time I had introduced a couple of my family members into this business. They, uh, you know, were looking for kind of something in their career path. They hadn't quite found it yet. My brothers and I showed them this, they got really good at it. So my first year in business, we kind of all worked together and that was, a big part of it is that the, my first, you know, in the start of it, we had a good team to get going. And um, that's really how I got going in the, in the business, to be honest with you. So, you know, I just stuck with it, worked for a couple of roofing companies. And then after, you know, really seeing their production headaches and how they couldn't keep up usually with their sales, I was like, Hey, you know, let me try to go see if I can figure that out and, you know, build my own business. Nice, man. That's awesome. And you guys are out in uh, North Carolina, correct? Yeah. North right, Carolina, so, so we're we're just local, yep. And you're a big basketball fan, basketball fan, I know. So so there's the there's a there's there's a question looming out there, right? Yeah. UNC or Duke? I'm a UNC fan, Tar Heels. <laughs> yep. There you go, man. Chapel Hill, right? Yeah, I'm all. all right. That's where Jordan went. I'm all about Michael Jordan. That's so. right, man. Yep. Nice, nice. Uh, that that's probably more important than uh, than a lot of the stuff that we'll talk about today, right? So yeah. Um, but <laughs> but but with Roof King, um, uh, you know, let let's talk a little bit about uh, about who your ideal customer is. What's your target market? Uh, who do you guys focus on on serving? I mean, we say you know anybody you know no job too small. We'll do roof repairs, but our our 
target customer is really like the high end residential customer, you know, somebody that's owning a, over half a million to a million dollar dwelling and that, you know, is, doesn't have a roof where they can trust because we're somebody that's been in business, you know, six years now and has enough experience to where we do those jobs correctly. If it's a designer shingle, copper, you know, valleys, anything that's like specific like that, we feel like we're the roofer for. And then also if you're a customer that's been denied, or on their second, third go around through their insurance, we're the insurance specialists. You know, this that's where I, I that's my bread and butter, and I understand that process so well that we're the company that can take a lot of those high end customers that have been mistreated or they didn't, you know, their first go around, they didn't get what they want, and we end up, you know, getting them approved, and that usually gets us a ton of referrals and kind of finds us that niche where we're known as the company. You, you know, hey, call they'll make sure they can take care of you front to back to cut the red tape with the insurance company. Nice, man. So, so in positioning yourself to those customers, what's your, what's your unique selling proposition? How do you, um, how do you, how our, do you kind of transmit that uh, to the, to, to your perfect customer? Yeah. Our value proposition really is, um, you know, like we use our brand a lot, you know, Roof King, obviously that's really catchy. And if you look us up, we have the Griffin Brothers Partnership. So we've been serving families since 1961. That's like our big, you know, selling point. But really what we try to do is make it, explain to them, hey, listen, we're a master league contractor. You're going to get the best warranty with us. You know, we go ahead and give them all the upgrades, you know, felt paper, architectural shingles, and they just pay their deductible. So that's our value proposition is, hey, hey man, why, if you're going to make that one decision in a lifetime or, you know, two or three times in your life getting a roof, why not choose the best roofing company that if you're going to pay your deductible to, they get, do the best job that they service the work the longest and are going to be here the longest. And then, you know, I usually ask them, hey, look up 10 companies in your area. And, you know, believe it or not, no matter where you're at, it's hard to find a lot of those companies in smaller cities, you know, and smaller, maybe in the bigger cities, you're going to find more franchise roofers, but in smaller cities, you know, you're only going to find a lot of local guys that are in the middle of the pack. And then you have these guys up here that are, you know, the platinum preferred master elite. And if you just educate a customer on that, you'll be amazed that they go with you because that's, you know, your value proposition. You're going to be here to service their work. You know, if you go out of business, they still get a warranty. So, um, that's kind of why we, uh, that's kind of like, you know, our little, you know, selling proposition for the customer. Nice. Nice. So what type of, what type of marketing do you guys do? It, do it, and you're, you're in how many, how many markets are you in right now? We're in four markets. Four markets. Okay. Yeah. Four big markets. Um, one of them we've kind of pulled away from and that's the coast just cause the coast is a little bit of a different beast. Yep. And, um, so, but we've been, you know, we, we service all the major cities throughout North Carolina. I'm from Charlotte. So that's always been our main market. Raleigh's though up and coming and, and is by far our fastest growing. Okay. But nice. yeah, but the marketing aspect, yeah. uh, we do, we do pretty much everything. Like if I looked at a list, we probably, you know, we're one of those companies that hits them all. You know, we don't put all our eggs in one basket. We're doing, you know, Angie's list. We got, you know, canvassers out, you know, knocking doors. But what's been biggest for us lately, and I know a lot of it, we have COVID-19, so there's a huge change going on in the world, but it's Facebook and Google. I mean, it has been amazing the past two years, the, the amount of really good leads we get out of Google and Facebook. Those are usually our strongest, you know, leads that we get that are, their closing ratio is, is pretty high. Thanks. Nice. nice. I, I have that same mindset. Uh, I was, and I've said this many times on, probably on, probably on the podcast for people that listen all the time. But there, there's a, a guy named Jim Rohn, uh, who is kind of a, a marketing sales guy, you know, wrote a lot of books. He was one of Tony Robbins mentors. And he always, he had this thing that I caught on to uh, back in the early 2000s reading his stuff. And it was that it, it takes five to seven lead sources to kind of fill a, cons a pipeline consistently, right? And, and what are your thoughts on, you know, why do you guys do everything? Is that, is that kind of to that point that- Absolutely. That's that, okay. that you just nailed on the head is I- I'm always trying to be assertive, thinking 10 steps ahead. And I get scared, like definitely with COVID, the COVID-19. I mean, you really shouldn't be out knocking doors. People are even scared to take paper, you know, if they're we we're weird about trans you know, transferring paper. That, that this is why I wanted to make sure that we were prepared, that we had different forms of marketing for when we grew. Not only so, because, you know, I look at it. I have like a little model I do in my head that if I have, you know, per, per each employee, definitely if they're a roof consultant, they have to do a mil they should be able to produce a million dollars. And then the production 
should be able to service that. So if I have, you know, like right now we've got eight guys and a lot of them, you know, self-generate, I need to have a certain amount of company leads to not only keep them busy, but to pay for their salaries. You know, if we're not keeping them busy, they're not getting sales to pay the bills. So that's why I do it because when I was growing the business, you know, we might, we might've had one good day where we'd get a lot of leads knocking doors and then you go weeks without the phones ringing and you're just waiting on a referral. And I just didn't want to do that anymore. And I'm, you know, I'm on a lot of these other roofing training programs that are out there. And um, that's just what they say in there, like on Sky Diamonds University or Storm Ventures. They just say in there, hey, you know, you need to start doing these other forms of marketing because the world's changing. So that's why we did it. You just nailed it. Right on, man. Yeah, that's that's what I see. And I, I know a lot of contractors out there that just they'll try to rely on one thing or they're looking for one kind of one solution like, oh, well, this, you know, if Facebook is going to kill it, then let's just go all in on Facebook and forget everything else. And I think that's a big, a big problem uh, that, that companies have when they're trying to grow. Um, and you did mention that you guys are doing good on Google and Facebook. That, that, that sounds like it's been some of the better leads that have been coming in into the, into Absolutely. your company, especially since, uh, since the COVID. Yeah. So what are you guys doing on Google? Are you fo focused on search engine optimization, pay-per-click, Google local service ads? What are, what, what are yeah, you guys I, doing I have done, I've been doing all that since we started, you know, started with a small budget and then just slowly I've just been growing it organically, put more money into it. And then um, really it's our reviews is we just make sure we get enough reviews to stay on top of Google and that we know we've got at least a couple good ones coming in every month. So that way we've got fresh ones up there. And that seems to, that's taken our company to another level. I mean, you know, it's, um, you just got to keep, but it's also something if you know, when you start getting ratings, you got to be able to service the customers. Cause if not, you'll get really bad ratings really quick also. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. You got to make sure that you're, you're able to serve. Right. And, and, and yep. those reviews are, you know, there's some statistics out there now that, that, um, that it's like over, what is it like over 80% of people trust an online review as much as a referral from a friend or family member, right? So as they're reading their reviews, those are such an important part of the process. And uh, we'll talk, I want to go a little bit deeper into that a little bit later, maybe your review process and how you guys are doing that. Yeah. What are you guys doing on Facebook and social media? social media that's doing the, that's generating the best action uh, kind of Just, we do we do constant posts you know every week we've got somebody that blasts out posts monthly and we'll, we'll we'll make sure that it's already automated with what we're sending out but then it's it's like on this program i'm doing they call it digital door knocking is basically you do a campaign of a certain amount of videos and that can either be a picture and what we've been doing is actual you know live videos of us on job sites us out knocking doors, us out doing roofing inspections, and just kind of explaining the process. And then we just put a lot of money behind it. We just kind of do targeted ads in the neighborhoods we're working. And we just, you know, have been definitely since COVID, we've tripled our Facebook budget. Yeah, definitely. Is that, is that Lee's, is that Lee's system? The yep, that's Lee's stuff? system. So I, yeah, Lee so I purchased, I purchased his system. It was roughly cheap, about $500 in total for the digital door knocking. And I just went off his scripts and just learned his system. And I've just been repeating that process for the past 90 days. And it's been working. I mean, it, it, it's been working. And not only has it been working for that, for leads, but it's been getting us recognition. People have been, you know, wanting to come work here and getting more involved with Roof King because our online image is looking better. That's another thing that people don't think about it. Shout out Lee Haight. I, I think he does, he yeah, does a lot of great man. stuff. You do have to, you know, implement. It's not for everyone, I'm sure, you know, I, I, yeah. you know but, but, but he, ha he puts out a lot of good stuff. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get him as a guest on the podcast here. Yeah, definitely. So, um, but, uh, but when, when, you, when you're speaking to that, um, what, did I, what was I thinking of? The, with the Facebook thing, it, it's putting some budget behind it, right? That's part of the process with social media. And one of the kind of misconceptions these days is that if you just start posting on social media, that will generate that interest. It's, it's not just the posting on social media, uh, Facebook and Instagram and all of these places have reduced the organic reach that you're going to get on those posts for people listening. And so putting paid ad spend behind those social posts will get you in front of a greater audience. And that's, 
And that builds that brand awareness, right? So that brand Absolutely. awareness being built through that process. Now, as, as Jonathan is saying now, he, he, it's not just that he's attracting customers, right? It, it sounds like you're attracting, you know, employment employees and things like that too. Yeah, employees, people reaching out, asking questions all the time. Like I've had customers that call me that said, hey, I saw your video. I got denied. I felt like I got mistreated. Everything you said, you know, kind of described it. I want, I need to talk to somebody. You sound like you know what you're talking about. Or I, I've had a lot of uh, other business owners or other sales reps reach out to me and say, well, how do you do this? Or how do you do that? You know, you're young. I see you had a little bit of success with this. And it's because now with social media, we're all starting to be able to talk about it, you know, That's like right. on these roofers forums, just like what me and you were doing, yep. you know, I'm, I'm young, but even three, four five, six years ago, we didn't, nobody was talking this much. And now information is getting passed a lot quicker. And I think people are realizing that um, they're missing out on a lot of opportunities they didn't know about. Definitely. And, and one of the things I learned a long time ago was the person in front of the room is, is the expert. Right. So yeah. with, you, with social media and paid social media marketing, you can place yourself in front of the room. Right. You can you can be the expert in your area and showcase those your expertise to all of the homeowners, wherever, you know, in your in your service yeah. areas, in your target markets. So that's awesome, man. I, I, that's that that's great that you guys are doing that. Um, and so what. You know, that, that sounds like it's generating the most leads now. Are you guys doing any pay-per-click or Google local service ads too, or just focused on kind of the map section? And yeah, we just do an SEO yep. and then the, the, the Google, the Google ad services that they came out with, that's been working the best, but um, we, I quit doing PPC. I haven't been doing PPC or any of that. Um, now I'm just, I'm going really hard on social media. Okay. You know, nice. yeah. Nice. What it, a lot of times I like to have this conversation with, 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 with roofing business owners, because it's something that a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of contractors don't think about. And that is your customer acquisition cost, right? Do you guys really, do you guys focus on your, on your customer awesome. acquisition cost? Yes, we do. Um, sorry, I had somebody just walk in my door. Yeah, no problem. Phone. We, yeah, we do actually, um, I have a company that I, I use two different you know marketing companies and one of them actually has broke have this like crazy excel chart where they break down in my exact cost per lead like my exact cost for what i'm spending because that they can track it through google and i think we've got it to where like i'm at, it's only like you know 25 35 dollars per lead and those have been my best leads like a good example is you probably hear this all the time you know home advisor is like a hundred two hundred dollars a lead well at least it is in the north carolina market and those leads are crap compared to my 20 and $30 leads, you know, those 20 and $30 leads. And that's made me excited because I think back in, you know, a couple of years ago, I used to look at it like, like a hundred or 200 bucks per an internet lead to, to, you know, get an acquisition from a customer. Now I look at it like it's probably like 50 bucks a customer, you know, wow. cause we get two or three. Yeah. I mean, because and, and, and that just depends on your business model. Cause a lot of those obviously are going to be repairs, you know, little gutter guards, you're getting everything. But if you're running those leads, you're closing them. I mean, Google's just a, a lot more, I don't, it's just a lot stronger than, than these home advisors, Angie's list. There's the, they, you know, when people look you up, they want to go with you. Yeah. And that's where you get to build that trust before, before, before they even make that phone call, right? Yep. Through your reviews, through the way that you position yourself online. Um, and what I want to point out is that you're talking about through SEO, right? The lead cost through SEO. So the lead, the, the calls that you're getting through your Google My Business listing, maybe through your website, through organic yep. rankings and things like that. That's what's getting down into that $25, $50 uh, a call. And, and, but that, that lead cost for people, I, I want you to understand, doesn't happen overnight. There's a lot of work that goes into that over time. To, if you do the right things, you will get those rankings. And You're get exactly right. Cost, so I right? hate to say that, but I kind of tell people, they ask me, like, how have you got here? How's your internet? Where it's at? I honestly tell them because I understand how SEO and all the organic growth works. I mean, it's cost me not only a ton of legwork, but probably about $100,000, if not more, over over time. You know, with Over time. My, yeah. Just, the web, over just getting... Time. You know, if you get your website the correct way professionally, like you just said, you know, your first year it might be three grand, five grand, ten grand, and then you keep going year over year. You look at those big companies, 
that's because they've spent a ton of money. So like when people look at me, that's what it is. It's been, it's been a slow grind of doing the same thing for six years straight. And then every couple months, you know, up increasing your budget, going into the busy season, the slow season. And over time, like you said, you organically get it to where you have a low lead cost. So, you know, shout out to my marketing team because they, they know what they're doing. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and that's what a lot of people don't have is that patience, right? There are long term, there are short term marketing efforts, uh, kind of midterm marketing efforts and long term marketing efforts. SEO is one of those long term marketing efforts. But if you put the work in, the results will come, right? They, they definitely will come. So, so what, uh, what, are there any marketing efforts that you've stopped using in, you know, over the years that because of lack of performance, I, I know you'd mentioned like home advisor leads and stuff like that. Yeah. But. yeah I mean, I, I, I turn it on every once in a while if we get slow, but I usually keep those home advisor leads off. I, I probably ran a way more of those three, four years ago. Um, Angie's list. I'm not as heavy with them anymore. I used to spend a lot more money with Angie's list a year or two ago. Um, I don't use Thumbtack anymore. I Thumbtack was something I used every once in a while. So a lot of those lead services I don't use anymore because I think Google and Facebook is just that strong. So, so I, ha I have a, a theory and I, I talked to, I, I, I mentioned this to contractors that I talk to all the time that, that a lot of these paid sources, right? Whether it's pay-per-click ads, even social media marketing, uh, the lead, the, you know, buying leads from the big lead aggregators, those are gap fillers right? So to me, they fill gaps, right? Like you said, you turn them on every now and then if leads are slow. I, that's what I try to get, get it in people's minds is that they, they, they're not the end all be all of your business, they, but they will definitely fill gaps. They can get the phone ringing. They can get action happening in your business. Just have the proper expectations of what you're doing there. So what's happened, it sounds like what's happened in your business, you can tell me if I'm wrong, is that you, you started off more with some of those kind of lead generation, lead aggregators, buying leads. And now you've built up such a strong online presence that you don't have to rely on that. anymore. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. That, that's, uh, that's exactly what I, I try to, you're a perfect example of what, what I tell people all the time. And, and it, it takes a lot of work and it does take some, you know, some money up front to get those. Yeah. It takes like you said, now to patience, that patience. Patience, man. Yeah. It's so much yep. patience. So, um, it, so, okay. Now you, you guys have, you know, now you're, you're generating these leads Are you, are you doing anything special in your sales process that, 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 that you think is, is, is kind of beyond what, what most companies do? Um, our sales process. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's probably more than other companies. I think companies, you know, I, I know there's a lot of advanced guys out there. A lot of them I look up to and they're like, you know, my mentors in the industry. I think what I do that's better. And that's why, you know, I feel like I've ventured out on my own is our production. I feel like when you get a roof from us, I feel like we're better at, you know, managing the install, better at the crew. We're better at, you know, servicing our work and by working at, you know, all these other companies I've worked at other roofing companies are 50, $60 million roofers. So I know that. So that's what I think our niche is. And I think other sales guys would say that because we got a lot of good sales guys and they, you know, generate a couple, you know, a million, two million, and they're very comfortable handing those into production. You know, they know their customers are going to be happy. They know that we go over the job sites and things get done correctly. So that's what I think. I think that's probably what more matters, you know, is more yeah, obvious that, is the install. That, that's, a, that's an interesting yeah. point is I think that a lot of times when a salesperson really believes in and trusts in what they're selling, that it, it's, an, it's easier for them to sell, right? They're more, authentic, oh, yeah. they're more authentic in the sales process. They're not, they don't have to sell, right? They don't have the, it, so that's like my model base. That's like kind of my model that I think differentiates us from other roofers. That's awesome. I, yeah, that's great. So, so, okay, let's talk about production a little bit. So what, you know, what are the things that you do that make you stand out? You know, okay, I think other process? roofing companies are either smaller and they can't get to that point to where they can scale and, and they just decide not to. And then you see a lot of companies that just have, you know, project manager, they might have a production manager in the office and they're either probably bigger or they're trying to grow and they're just, you know, keeping within the family. So what I've learned 
is I've learned that unless you have that team, you know, and I've, I've, I've had to make some bad mistakes by doing so, you know, you go start a market and you think you can just put a guy in a truck to, you know, manage it and everything's going to get done right. That if you have a, a guy that's been doing it 10, 20, 30 years, and he can just handle all the operations of that business, they're gonna, it's going to run 10 times smoother. I've, been, I've worked at other roofing companies that were like that, where they had a, a regional manager who could get up there, install the roof with you, and that company is going to run 10 times smoother. So that's kind of how we do things. As big as we are, as many markets as we have, I, I order all our material. I schedule all the jobs with the crews. I send you know, the list out to the, the project manager, to the office manager, and over time, I've had 15 people working for me, you know, on production. And then we've had five people. Everybody has come in an agreement that we run smoother. We get better reviews and we can scale up quicker when we have, you have the right people in place to deal with all that production. And the reason is, is the 80, 20 rule, you know, we're in some industries, you know, you're selling mortgages over the phone in roofing. You have to run back and forth to home Depot. You have to get the right plywood, the right nails. So if you don't have that guy in place, that company's never going to grow. They're just going to always stay where they're at. That's what I feel like we have. We have not only myself, but I've got two guys that have been with me multiple years and they can handle a lot in production. And that's what I've seen most people's headaches are is they like, what they do is they'll, st they'll get the sales going and they'll start building and then they don't have the production ready for it. And then now all the headaches can pile up or they give it. And I've done this many times you know, you hire a girl in the office or you hire somebody else and you say, Hey, this is your job. You just do it. And this is such a complicated industry that if you're not fixing those leaks and giving those customers the responses they need fast enough, you know, you're going to go out of business or you're not going to be able to, you know, call yourself roof King. So I feel like that's kind of what is, you know, is different than other business models is I figured that out that you got to, you know, and other roofers told me, I, I would ask them, you know, how are you so big? They'd be like, hey, man, you know, I let everything pass through me. Believe it or not, I do 10 to $20 million in transactions, and I still let everything pass through me. So that way these mistakes don't happen. So that's kind of, I mean, that's what I'm doing until I figure it out, I guess. And I, but it's been a huge part of our success. That's awesome. That, so so it, the, the right production managers, right? The right people in, yeah. the, in the, in the production, in, in, in the production kind of, uh, you know, right roles in the, in the production roles in your company. What makes a good production manager in your opinion? What are the traits of, you gotta be fast paced, very fast paced. Um, you gotta be able to, you know, work long hours. Cause a lot of times, you know, we install late. That's when things are, can arise or weekends, it can be raining, you know, and, and then you got a leak on your hands and you got to have really, really thick skin. Nobody in this industry ever survives in that job if they do not have thick skin because the, you, you're dealing with emotions. You're dealing with emotions from customers. You're dealing with emotions from crews. So that's what that person needs. They need to have thick skin. They need to be fast paced and be able to just basically deflect. And if they do that, they'll be very good because, you know, customers are going to complain but you got to make them happy. It's just that what I've seen is I've seen that somebody can only deal with so many complaints. You know, they, they get to a point where they get, you know, burned out because they're trying to deal with too many customers. And if that person can just weather that storm, they're perfect for it. Nice. Nice. And so, you know, through production now, you know, you're, you're putting on a quality product, you're a quality product and you're doing a great job. Is there anything that you do special on production day that makes you that that really that you that you do to stand out in the customer's eyes to kind of you know? I mean, maybe review? not. I mean, other roofers probably do this too, so I don't think we're anybody special. But I I still think we stand out really really well. Is we get there every morning, you know, right before the crew starts, before they start. Usually, most of the time. I mean, obviously, sometimes you know when we're pulling up the same time or a little bit after, and I think that really creates a lot of trust. That makes where that customer before they go to work or if they're going to be there all day, they really feel like they're they got comfort and and that they're reassured that we're going to do the job right. And then in the Raleigh market, you know, I manage all our installs, so then they get to meet the owner and they feel that direct contact. And I feel like that sets us apart. And we always do walk arounds and extra cleanups regardless if you know we even have to so on every one of our installs we always come back run the magnet again we'll do an attic inspection and i think those little things that we're doing make make you know make it to where they remember us 
And, you know, I think what we do compared to other roofing companies that probably sticks out, to be honest, is on our installs, we give, and most of the time it's me doing it, is I'll give the customer a very, very detailed update of what happened during their installation, not only during, but afterwards. So like most companies just build the roof, the office manager's following up, production manager's following up, they're emailing. I'll actually, you know, get on your roof, take pictures of us cutting in your ridge vent, take pictures of the bad plywood, me taking the three inch sinker nails or the right, you know, nails and using them. And I'll update the customer and I'll say, sir, you might not have been educated on this aspect of roofing, but I am simply just going to do this to give you overkill. So you know exactly what happened while we were at your property. And I think that right there makes it to where when we're done, that is what makes it where we stick apart because they feel like they really interacted with a roofer. They're like, wow, like I learned something new. He put ice and water shield on a 412 pitch and I didn't even know about that. You know, wow, why did, why did he tell me this? Why did he send me photos? Why did he send me a long list? Naming all these things because I want that trust to where if a warranty or anything comes up and I just feel like that's what's setting us apart because it's not only myself, but our project manager, office managers, all our roof consultants, they're trained like this. I mean, I, we don't, I mean, we don't even let anybody really on our team unless you understand that you're, you're here to be the best because if a headache comes up, like what me and you are talking about on production, we've got to be responsive. And that's what I've always seen is I think that's what sets us apart too is, is our, you'll get the same experience from our sales rep that you would on our production team. You don't, we don't just have sales guys running around. They actually understand that we're building roofs and how to make the, you know, what we got to do to make these customers, you know, happy. So that was, that was the first, that was really what popped in my mind when you were talking about that process and the detail that you go into and in taking those pictures. A lot of times that's done on the sales side, right? We're, yeah. very, you know, you know, you're up on the roof, you're taking pictures of all the, if it was a, you know, storm damage or something like that, you're really, really detailed in it. The salesperson is usually really detailed in explaining what is wrong and how they're going to fix it. But I love that, that aspect that you guys are going in on the other side and showing this oh. is doing in great detail to fix it. And, and, oh, and I'm yeah. sure that, that, that that is definitely building trust you know, you already built trust with them for them to hire you, right? But now you're taking that to another level of trust. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Like a good thing I like to do is I, I use videos a lot. You know, a lot of us have iPhones. So yep. I like to take videos of what I, so like, because a lot of customers aren't there when you do a walkthrough because a lot of times people are going to work. So yep. I actually will literally take videos and say, hey, how are you doing, Brian? I'm about to take a video real quick of me getting in your bushes. And I'll take a video of me scraping it with magnets and that, I've noticed create so much trust because they're like, man, this guy's not afraid of getting his hands dirty and showing me, you know, showing me that he found nails or, and that, I think that's a great tactic. I've been telling, you know, our sales guys definitely with COVID is, is use the video conferencing as much as you can, or just taking a video of yourself and sending it to a customer and they love it. Definitely. Definitely. That's awesome. That, that those, those details are what really makes you stand out for sure. And so, you know, coming back, back around to some of the early conversation, um, uh, you know, what are you guys doing in that process to generate the reviews? It sounds like a lot of the things that you're implementing are to build that trust and to, you know, make sure that they, that, that you're kind of creating a, a fan out of that, uh, out of that customer. Is there any specific way that you're asking for reviews? Yes. What is your, what is the process for Absolutely. that? Absolutely. There's a specific way. So we, um, we make sure, obviously, you know, make sure the customer's happy and we, we do, you know, we follow up with them to make sure that we can get the review before we even ask, you know, so obviously we're not just, you know, have, we're just asking every customer, you know, which most of our customers are satisfied, but we, we got a cool software that our marketing team gave us that basically sends an automated text message with a link to the Google. So that way, if you have an Android or you're logged into your Gmail account, you can just text the review you want to post and it automatically will put it on the Google website. So like for people that are older or anything like that, that one less step I've noticed has helped us get a lot more reviews than just trying to do it the old school way or taking them to the website. And then what we usually do is we send them the review and then we kind of use it as a push 
for when we go to collect our money. So we haven't got all our money yet. When we're following up with them, we're like, hey, you, you already got that review link. Can you please make sure to fill it out? This is just a friendly courtesy reminder. And that's what I've noticed has been our best is by when we follow up, we act like it's a courtesy reminder and we're just getting our check. And then we usually have the rep or the office manager explain to them, hey, we get rated on customer satisfaction. We get bonuses as employees for these things. So even if it's bad, sir, could you please just post it? And this is just my friendly reminder to you. And most of the time, people are only going to post it if it's something nice. But by following that little system, we get a lot of reviews. Definitely. That's great. And, and it's, it's in the ask. Um, I like the, that, you're, that, you're, uh, that, that the employees are saying, hey, we get bonuses on this. It's part of what we do. So, so the homeowner feels like they're helping that employee. I think yeah. that a lot of times is where, 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 where companies miss the boat because um, a homeowner sometimes will have a disconnect with the company, but they'll have a connection with the salesperson or the produ production manager or the office manager yep. or someone on the team Right. And so that personal connection will 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 drive that review a, a lot, you know, a lot faster than 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 for the company. Right. Yep. So like my project managers, that's how I rate them and our all our managers get rated on customer satisfaction and reviews. So that's the that's the way that that's why our system works, because they kind of use that, like you're saying, is that is their end. Yeah. And it's built into your it's I mean, that sounds like it's built into your company culture. Right. Yep. It's not just, hey, we need to get these reviews. Right. Yeah. This is what we do. This is part of what we do on a daily basis is get those reviews. It's part of your job. Yep. And you had mentioned reputation management tools. I don't know which ones you guys what which ones you guys are using or which one you guys are using, but um, but uh, just for the listeners out there, there's so many available, right? There's so many reputation management tools available. They all do about the same thing, right? They all will send an email to your client with a link. Uh, they'll send a text message to your customer with a link. Um, and, and so having that tool really helps in that process, but having that tool will not get you more reviews. You have yep. to ask. <laughs> so... Um, so let, let's talk a little bit about, you know, I know you guys are, are, are part of, uh, are, are part of, are part of the, the, um, is it the Griffin companies? The Griffin the, Brothers the Zoom, company. Yep. The Griffin Brothers company. Sorry. The Griffin Brothers companies and part of the zoom up program. And, and we were talking about this earlier uh, off the call, but, but about how, what kind of impact that has had on you. It, it kind of, I guess maybe explain a little bit about what that is and what, what uh, kind of what that is. I, I think it's from what I understand of the program, it, it's essentially uh, you have a, kind of access to some really high level mentorship in that area. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, it means a lot to me. I mean, it's been a huge part of our success and one of the best things I feel like we've done in our, you know, in our journeys of being roof king is it really allows like you said the mentorship where you get guidance advice on you know how to be bigger in business you know marketing advice just you know a lot of people probably don't realize you know if they're on the facebook or all these things you have all these referral groups or all these like little networks that's kind of what it is not only is it mentorship but by being part of it through, you know, all these other businesses, we got HVAC companies, electrical companies, plumbing company, you know, um, sewage companies. So all, all of us get to talk and we get to, you know, share ideas and we get to talk about our challenges out there as business owners that are millennials. You know, all of us, they target guys that are from the ages of 25 to 35. I mean, you can be any age, you can be 50, 60 years old, but they're, you know, mostly going after that millennial age group. And that's what I found out because when I was, you know, going through the, the grind, I got to a point where not only do they provide, you know, finances and they usually, they make investments that provide, you know, more of a financial structure for those businesses. But I was smart enough to realize I was at, you know, I'm looking at my numbers in front of me. I was at 1.5, 1.6 was my best year. So I was at, but I averaged about 1.2 to 1.3. I was, I was, I realized I couldn't get any bigger. I realized that not only would it take a lot more money financially and then my, you know, st you know, stability, you know, stable wise, you know, you're doing it all yourself to have partners would be a lot better, but knowledge, 
I realized that knowledge was money. I mean, my, and I think where I learned a lot of this too was growing up was I had family members who were big in business, everything they did and most of their success came from their partnerships. It came from who they knew, who they got in business with, what agreements, ways they, you know, sliced up a different market or a different, you know, that they, they were doing car businesses then. So those are things that I learned and saw. And then I always, you know, I'm a, like you said, you mentioned it earlier, I'm big into basketball. So I'm, I'm a team player. I, I, you know, every, all of us got those egos and want to be number one, but I'm not like that as a leader. I'm the guy that you can criticize. You can say, Hey man, you got to do this better. You're doing that wrong. Why don't you, you know, you need to step your game up. So I, I wanted that in my life. I, I knew that if I got that at a young age, that would also help me as I got older. Cause think about it. You're an entrepreneur, self-employed. You can't, I mean, you're not only, you're dealing with a lot of headaches, but, you can't be telling yourself something good every day. You know, you got to have somebody that tells you, Hey, you're, you spend too much money or Hey, you lost too much money. So little things like that, having a mentorship or a business partner, that's what I see the value in. So like if you're a roofer, you know, you got a guy that's good at production. You got a guy that's good at sales. They can probably make the perfect team, but then where it also helps is you have somebody else watching the money, watching, you're watching each other's backs. So, you know, it just, it just helps in today's times. Yeah. And it sounds like you're, you, I mean, you, you, you sound like someone who, who seeks knowledge in a lot of different places mm -hmm. with like Lee's program. And it sounds like you do a lot of other things, but, but that's, that's one of the things that, you know, I think that people get lost in is that they try to do it all themselves. Right. And I love the sports analogy, the basketball analogy, because, you know, you have teammates, you have coaches, you're you're practicing right not you're not it's not game day all the time right so sometimes you're you're training right and so that's part of gaining that knowledge um and sometimes you need a coach right you yeah. may be you you can be the star player you can be the star point guard but without the right coaching without the right people on your team it just doesn't it, it's not going to work out for you so um you know I think that that is a great thing that you guys have been doing is, is finding mentors to fill those gaps in your knowledge, finding and, and becoming part of these groups, right? It doesn't have to be the specific group that you're involved in, but, you know, industry trade associations, local business associations, like being a part of, of groups and, and being around people that are going through some of the same struggles that you are, maybe not in the same industry. Like you said, it, part of your guys' group is, you know, electricians and, and, you know, other types of companies. But, but a lot of times you'll run into similar struggles, right? It, it, from a business perspective. So join groups, you know, joining groups and being around very successful people is definitely, um, you know, definitely something to, to look out for, for, for the listeners. That's, you know, something yeah. that, um, so what, uh, what do you think is, uh, is the greatest insight that you could share with our audience that that's helped you find success in, in your roofing business? Um, I mean, it's probably like, you know, little things, but I, I think, that what's starting to make me successful now, definitely this past, like lately this past year or two is be mindful of your time. If you, if you can figure out, you know, definitely as a business owner and, and for those managers out there, you know, definitely these guys, be, I always teach everybody on this team to be very mindful of your time. You know, I'm a finance guy. So you have the time value of money equation. What I figured out is that if you waste a lot of your time, putting it, training the wrong person, waiting for that sales guy to turn into a deal and he never does it, then you're just going to keep going backwards and keep wasting, you know, wasting so much energy, effort, and money. And I, I could sit here and it, tell people all the stories about this market or that market. And, and that's, that's what I could tell them is this, if, you, if you're mindful of that, you can be successful. Because once you figure out this business, you're like, I know how much time it takes to sell a roof. I know how much time it takes to build a roof. So, you know, if I'm out here recruiting, when I recruit people and Lee talks about it in his training program, and I kind of got some of this from Lee, he was like, man, just be straight up with them. Like just straight up tell somebody, man, I am busy. I don't have a lot of time. Most guys come on board my team. They don't make it, man. Like we, we only take winners. We don't like losers on our team. And like, if you start just telling people that 
you'd be amazed. And not only will you get the right people around you, you'll get the wrong people away from you quickly. Cause like when I interview people and I start explaining this to them, like, Hey, you know, we're a bunch of winners. You know, we like to bring the best out of each other. So, you know, we can be hard on each other. That person will never usually, they'll say, they'll tell us like, Hey, I'm not interested. Hey, uh, they won't come back to the second phase or the third phase of the interview. And that's what I realized. I realized that because I, if you go back through the years of me being in business, there were so many times where I was hiring people and putting time into them who never even listened. They never listened. They never di dissected any of the knowledge you gave them, any of these things. And I lost so much money, so much time. And then I started doing things myself, focusing on my time management. I started selling more, being way more profitable. And then when I started, when, like when it comes to recruiting people, I started getting a lot better people around me and being able to filter through them quickly. And I think that's a great skill, not only in roofing, but just in life in general. I think people don't realize that that's the key to making a lot of money is a lot of people think that life's going to come easy. Don't waste your time doing something that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Time is, time is limited, right? We're, we all oh, yeah. have limited time and that's, that, that, that's great. That's a great insight there. Well, Jonathan, thanks for being on the, on the show yeah. today. This has been another episode of the Roofing Success Podcast. Thank you. I appreciate it. If you would like to generate more sales through your digital marketing efforts, please visit roofermarketers.com and get a copy of the book, Internet Marketing for Roofing Contractors, How to Triple Your Sales and Turn Your Roofing Website into an Online Lead Generation Machine. Also, check the training section of the website for guides on everything from running effective pay-per-click ads to how to properly set up your Google My Business listing. This has been another episode of the Roofing Success Podcast. Thanks for listening.